I saw a video where Atom Stack was cutting metal with their 20 watt laser. So I don't believe it. I figured we would test it out with the Xtool 20 watt because it should be the same amount of power and let's see if what they are saying is actually true. So if you saw my last video, you saw that I broke the machine and I messed it up, but Xtool support got back with me and they gave me a solution to get it fixed and up and running again. And I will have the link to this support page in the description below. And now that we got it fixed, let's put this machine back to the test. So I bought this big old box of different types of metals. We're gonna jump into it, put it on the machine, and see if any of it is actually true or if it's all fake. Here is the video of the diode laser cutting through a piece of metal. I cannot believe this, and there's no information. They're not responding to the comments on here. All I've ever heard is the only lasers that can cut or affect metal are fiber lasers. So we're gonna be testing it out with diode lasers today and see if we can replicate what we're seeing there. So let's take a look and see what I got. Now I ordered all of this off of Amazon, so I'll have links to everything down below if it's something that you'd like to try. This is some um, steel shim flat sheets. That's just a bunch of steel in there, varying thicknesses. Stainless steel, brass sheet, copper. Tin coated steel. Well, I, I don't know why I got that because it's just steel. Piece of cardboard. Stainless steel. It's, it's so pretty. There's the aluminum. All right, we are going to start out with the Precision brand Steel Shim Flat Sheets. And you can see we have 12 different thicknesses here and we're just gonna work our way from the thinnest. Uh, yeah, we'll just see if we can cut through anything. Or is this all just fake propaganda about lasers? All right, first up is point zero zero one inches of thickness. It's gonna go from one millimeters all the way up to 10 millimeters a second with 100% power. There it goes. Can't quite tell what's happening. Oh my gosh, it's cutting through the metal. I just looked over, what the heck? Wow, it's actually cutting. It's not pretty. I did not expect to see anything. I thought it was just gonna reflect off. Wow, okay. Look at that. We cut a piece of metal out. Definitely oxidizing the edges and turning them very blue, but uh, that's pretty incredible. This is our slowest at one millimeters a second. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's interesting. All right, let's go up to the next thickness and see what we can do with that. Here we go. Okay, I think we can stop because we are piercing through even at the fastest speed. I think what I'm seeing is the honeycomb is actually keeping it from cutting all the way through. So here's what I could do. I could actually raise it up. Yeah, because it really wants to weld. Come on, baby. There we go. So what if we put some magnets down like that? Look at that. It's cutting right through it. Whoa, that is amazing. So at nine millimeters a second, we're cutting right through it. 10, oh, 10 would have cut through too, but there was a magnet in the way. My bad. Look at that. Those are looking pretty clean. There's the back side. All right, let's go up in thickness. So 10 millimeters a second is just barely hanging on. I'll be able to pull it off. Nine millimeters, just on the corner there. Crazy. One, two, three. So three, three millimeters a second cut all the way through without any assistance. Here is four. Four was struggling just a little bit, but you can still pop it out. I wonder if air assist does affect this. And we'll run this one again, but with a higher PSI. 10 PSI. Oh, it does look like it's helping. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Six is cutting through all by itself. No assistance. Practically seven. Practically eight. Practically nine. 
practically 10, so air assist definitely does help. So let's uh, <clears throat> we'll run it again. So let's go up to 30. Wow. That cut 10 millimeters a second. This is uh, this is really starting to impress me. Cut lines are smooth. I mean, they're really looking good. Now when I turn this, we get 40 PSI right there at the nozzle. Love it. If you're interested in checking out the air compressor and air fittings that I use, I have links to all that in the description below. All right, next piece of metal is 0 .004. I just cannot wait to <laughs> show this to all the naysayers because honestly, I was a naysayer. I didn't think that these dial lasers could cut through any metal at all. I didn't even think they could etch metal at all because that's what I've been telling people. Everyone always asks, can these do metal? And I and everyone else always says, no, you have to get a fiber laser. Or are these diodes now at a power that is so high they can truly cut through metal now? Cutting through by itself at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Six is barely hanging on, so maybe 5 millimeters a second is the best cut. But again, they all can be popped out quite easily. Cool. Let's keep going up. And we're definitely getting to the thickness where it's struggling a little bit, but I bet I could pull that one out. That would be three millimeters a second. Looks like it's it's cutting through, and then two millimeters a second is cutting all the way through by itself. I'm gonna run a second pass just to see if multiple passes makes a good kind of tactic or not. All right, that does look like two passes does improve the cutting abilities of it. Yep, yeah, that one's all the way out. So that would be one, two, three, four millimeters a second at two passes. The next thickness up, this is 0 0.006. The one millimeters a second didn't fall out, but I believe that I would have no problem pulling it out. I mean, it's cutting through. It's just kind of on the corners. It may need to slow down a little bit on those corners there. And I think that's actually something I could program into Lightburn as well. See if a second pass will get us any better results. This was the second pass. We got clean cuts on the two millimeters a second at two passes. I think this is super cool though. I mean, just think of the capabilities that you can do with, with metal like this. I mean, you could make little earrings, charms, necklaces, you could veneer pieces of wood with metal cutouts. And I'm pretty sure as far as that oxidation goes, I should be able to sand that out. I think I may go test that out right now. So these are so small, it's kind of hard to get a good grab and really sand them. But you can see that with a little bit of sanding, you can take off that oxidation and get it back to just the steel itself. That's pretty epic. 0 0.007. Okay, the piercing has stopped at this thickness, even at one millimeters a second. So let's do this. We'll do two passes at one millimeter a second and see if that has any effect. We do have some piercing. I think it's gonna take three passes, maybe more. Oh, I forgot the air. Dang it. That probably affects it. Let's move it over and do two passes with air on. Third pass. All right, well, that's interesting. It's not really happening anymore. We did get that one through. Let's say we still go up more. You can see the heat. The heat that we are applying to it is starting to cause warping in the metal. So that's something that you have to think about. All right, that's 10 passes. I don't think it's really practical. But I mean, it's pretty thick. Okay, so 0 .008 inches of steel. We were not able to get any kind of cut through or penetration. So let's move on to the next material. All right, now we have some aluminum plate. Now this is 0.5 millimeters thick. Well, there we have it. Completely 
unaffected, not even hot to the touch. I think it is just too reflective for the laser to affect it in any way. And I am curious as to whether the reflection is going to be detrimental to the laser head itself. At some point we're going to have to open it up there, take a look at the laser lens and see if everything is okay. Next we have a piece of pure copper. And there we can see not affected at all, even at 100% power at one millimeter a second. Copper not happening. Here we have a piece of stainless steel, highly, highly, highly reflective. Whoa, okay. <laughs> that I did not expect. We got something here. Let's take a look. Okay, it's digging in even with that high reflection. That's uh I really thought this was gonna have no effect at all. So stainless steel. Alright, let's do let's just do three passes at one millimeter a second and see if we can cut through. So it's not through all the way. You're getting quite a thick engraving on the front side though. And yet again, you can see the amount of warping you'll get from the heat that it's creating. So that is a downside to this. What do we got next? Tin coated steel? Sure. Is removing the tin coating quite easily, no penetration. Not surprised. All right, brass. All right, take a look. It actually did. Yeah, I don't, oh, 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 there. Okay, so you can see it did change the color of the brass a little bit. Doesn't feel like there's any marking at all. Well, let's get in here and take a look at the laser head and make sure we haven't damaged anything on the inside with all these reflective materials. And here is a look at the lens. To me, it does not appear that we have damaged the glass or anything like that. There's no cracking. It looks good to me. That's a good sign because I know we were putting a lot of reflection in on this guy. Here is some three quarter inch birch. Figured we'd try to make something. The metal that we can cut and we'll use this as a backer for it. Three passes at three millimeters a second. We need 40 PSI. I think we just cut through. Second pass. Wow. I'm pretty sure that cut through. Let's see. Ah, it just fell out. Yo, this is insane. <laughs> I mean, the thing is cutting better than my CO2 laser does. What in the world? Look at that. And the edge quality on this thing. I mean, look, there's not even any residue coming off of that. How crazy is that? All right, we really do need to make something. I mean, we have some serious power and capabilities. Let's make something cool. I got this new timer so we can keep track of how long something takes. There we have it. Cut all the way through. Again, I cannot believe this. I am truly, truly impressed. That's just, that's insanity. These 20 watt lasers are incredible. Nice. Check that out. How crazy is it that I'm cutting metal? You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> How cool is that? Oh man, I love it. Clean off this side here with some isopropyl alcohol. There's probably better glues for this, but I'm just gonna use good old super glue. Oh, I guess we can do this. Hopefully it doesn't glue to the table. Uh-oh, it got glued to the table. All right. I don't know where that little divot came from, but that is really upsetting. Uh, I think I want these edges to be black. I'm a little bit afraid that if I put too much temperature on this still, it's gonna warp up. So I'm not gonna risk it on this one. I'm gonna use a product called Surmark. Of course, you can do much lower intensity and get black engravings. Asking tape that I use for laser engraving. I'm gonna lay that down on the bed and then I'm just gonna cut that off. Get the 
and place your design right inside. That'll help you get everything lined up. Okay, I'm gonna take this inside and go wash off the Surmark with some water, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Check that out. Uh, you can see the black is kind of matte. That's fine. I think I'm gonna take some clear finish and just spray it with some satin. Oh, do you see that bug? My gosh, it's like they know as soon as you spray finish, they've got to go land in it. What a turd. Leave them. I should just leave them. This is making it worse. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to my finish? Where was he? Right there? Hopefully that fixed it. So here it is. I know the size is a little bit underwhelming, but I did look online and I found the same gauge metal on Amazon in much larger sizes. So I'll have links to all that down below as well because potentially with this setup right here, I could do this sign up to like 15 or more inches in diameter. And of course, Xtool also sells an extension kit that you can add to your machine to make it extra wide as well, which would really up your abilities as far as size goes. I really look forward to implementing metal into the pieces that I make in the future as I really think it just makes it stand out a little bit more than just standard wood engravings. I would love to show more product ideas on what you can do with this. I do have another video with 25 product ideas that I make and sell and if you haven't seen that you can find that on my channel and you can just look at those 25 products and think to yourself how could I add metal to those in different ways to make them a little bit different than everything else as well. I know in this video we saw that we had really good success with steel and most likely stainless steel. All the other metals were much thicker which I think had a lot to do with why we were not able to cut through them. So in the future I will look into finding those other metals in a much thinner gauge so that I'll be able to test those out as I know people will be curious whether or not those can be cut as well and I will be sure to share those results on here. If you have any ideas or concepts that you'd like me to try out here on this channel, be sure to leave a comment on this video as I really have appreciated the community here on YouTube. It's really neat to see how we can all learn from one another and share knowledge and help one another grow. I do wanna apologize for my infrequency with posting videos as the business here has gotten a little bit busy as the past month, I'm gonna show you a few examples of what I've been working on here in the shop. But when I do have free time, I really do enjoy making videos like this and being able to share the results with all of you. If you're interested in seeing more digital fabrication, project building, and things like that, be sure to go check out my channel and have a look around. I wanna thank my supporters on Patreon, my top supporter, Dr. Larry Anderson and Woodland Iron. But for now, that's all I got.